Hey, this is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode, I have the great pleasure of talking to Stephen Rossler from Rossler's Blue Cord Barbecue. I'm not going to make this intro too long because it's a it's a long interview, and it's worth listening to every moment of it. Uh, Stephen is, is incredibly passionate, and we get into why it's called Rossler's Blue Cord Barbecue, and we talk about uh, a lot of very emotional and uh, troubling moments in his life that have built to where he is today and shaped him as a person. Uh, things that happened in the army that uh, I, I'm I'm honored that he would share that with me, and uh, it's it's kind of interesting how he, he kind of sees the barbecue world as the army world that he was involved with, uh, the, the the sense of camaraderie and family, and I see that too. I see how much uh, how incredible the barbecue family is. So I, I really think you're gonna love this. You're gonna see his passion. He's very very close to. Uh, completely doing his dreams with barbecue that he wants to do, and he, we, we get all into that. Thank you, Stephen, for your services. Thank you. Thank you to everyone in the armed services for their service. What you're doing and what you've done uh, cannot be thanked enough, uh, yeah, but especially, Stephen, thank you for sharing your story. And this episode is sponsored by The Smoke Sheet. The Smoke Sheet is a barbecue newsletter, a weekly newsletter that is put out by Ryan Cooper, barbecue tourist and and Sean Ludwig from NYC barbecue uh, it's just chock full of tons of information uh, barbecue openings closings news at all of any relevance every time I do open it uh, I scroll through it and there's tons of stuff that I know about and I try to stay on top of everything uh, you can sign up at bbqnewsletter.com that's bbqnewsletter.com there's also information about events upcoming events because I always miss out and I'm sure a lot of you guys always miss out on a Events. You hear about it the weekend that it happened, and or hear about it a day before. So this way you can pre-plan. It that's a really important tool. It has a recipe of the week, which is just awesome. Always really good. I've uh, used a number of those. I've been on board since day one for this. And a really cool feature is they have links to current podcast episodes and YouTube stuff that that you might not have heard of. So it's a uh, it's totally worth signing up. You can sign up again at bbqnewsletter.com. The smoke sheet, barbecue news worth consuming. Check it out. And if you're enjoying these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out on anything. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with all my links to podcasts, all my YouTube stuff, all my barbecue joint tours and butcher shop tours and all that cool stuff. But enjoy this. Yeah, man, I'm ready to go. I, um, I've i been up for, for a while. You know, I did PT this morning and then um, just kind of just been standing by. I'm, I'm actually the company first aren't so uh, like, you know, I have my commander I report to, but like I'm the next next in line. Um, which for, for me, like, that's a, that's a really big deal. Yeah. Um, especially, but, but anyways, um, you know, I just let them know as a, Hey brother, I'm going to be in a little bit late. I'm finally, like, we finally like we're able to make this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm have 14 months till I retire. So everyone's very big on like, you know, so it's good. So everybody, everybody, like, are they like really pushing everybody like for the next chapter of their life? Is that kind yeah. of, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's cool because like where I work at, it's the Fort Hood WTU warrior transition unit and oh. that's what we do we help soldiers transition back to the fighting force or back to the um back to the workforce you know because oh. most of the people we deal with or at least my company deals with is compo two and three which basically means national guard and reserve okay. so um you know these soldiers you know they get injured or whatever the case may be it's just that um so but yeah it's good man and, and plus i get to take advantage of everything so it's yeah, like you no, know that's it's awesome. a double whammy you know? yeah it's yeah and, and and first off thank you for your service and, and thanks it's just beyond where like, i i know that speaking for millions of people thank you so much right. and that's that's yeah. awesome and i i appreciate everything you do and 14 months that's going to go by pretty quick oh it's it's awesome man i mean it's it's hard to believe it's been 18, 18 and a half, you know, years, but it's, you look like a kid. Yeah, I, I know. That's what everyone is always like, dude, what the heck? You know, you like 26 I have or... tattoos and, you know, have young kids and, and, um, they're, they're not here right now. My two young girls, but you know, it's, um, a four year old, well about to be four and about to be one year old. And they're like, dude, you started late in your career. And I'm like, I'm glad I did because now I get to enjoy True. everything, you know, with them. So, but yeah, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And, I, and thank you for uh, the upcoming barbecue stuff that you're and like sure. what you're doing now. That's like, that's like a double whammy for me. That's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for all of us. So let's, let's, let's go back to your, to your history. Where, where were you born? So, um, I was, so I, it's kind of crazy. I was born in Abilene, but, um, Abilene, Texas, yeah. um, brought to San Angelo literally like a week and a half later. Oh. Um, and, um, actually I was born July 3rd and July 9th, they called my mom and told her I was born. 
uh, my mom and dad because I'm adopted. Oh. Uh, parents picked me up like two weeks after I was born um, and brought me back to Midland, Texas, um, and, and actually outside of Midland, Greenwood, a okay. uh, small, small school that has a suburb uh, basically around it or sub, you know, or, or not suburb, but a community around the school. And so, so very um, small town, very, 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 very small town, just right outside of uh, Midland, Texas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, roughly a hundred in my graduating class, wow. which, uh, this year is my 20 year anniversary or 20 year, you know, an anniversary, whatever you want to call it for being graduated. So it's kind of crazy. Wow. You know? That's crazy. You know, it's, and it's interesting yeah. too, just to get back to the small town part. I, uh -huh. until I visited Texas, I didn't really realize what a small town was. A lot of people right. listening to this or watching this would, would are from the big cities. And so for sure. it's, it's, it's a different, like a hundred people in your graduating class. I had, I think, uh, 1200 in my graduate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, even better is that, you know, in Midland, um, they, they had the same thing. Like they have two big high schools, um, you know, Midland High and Midland Lee, um, which you see in Friday Night Lights. And then okay. obviously Permian and, and, and Odessa High over in Odessa. But um, for me, like I thank God daily that's like, man, I had this coaching staff and this community and my I mean, obviously my parents, too. But like everyone it was like allowed to spank everyone's kid you know what i mean so it's like you always had the the reprimand there the kid the kids were growing up right 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 exactly you know exactly. and that's interesting so, too that you were yeah. adopted into this life too yeah wow. exactly we, we touch on that here in a little bit but like my faith has been very strong growing up and then obviously when i deployed in 03 and 04 and then 11 and 12 it my faith like kind of slipped away from me for for a, a very long time actually and now I'm getting back to it. So it's good. Yeah, you oh, know, interesting. Like I, that's I, important. I believe that's, in a higher power. Wow. So. That, and that's amazing too, that like it's, and that's, that's, those are, that's, I'd like to touch upon that because yeah. as we tell the story, because I think that it's important that people, For because sure. people do lose faith in a lot of things and yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially when Most they're put into certain circumstances. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, but uh great, great childhood, you know, really just, um, you know, the, the thing with us is that living in West Texas, um, you know, my buddy, Brett, Brett born, you know, born at Brett's backyard yeah, barbecue. Yeah. He was touching on it. You know, he lived just north of us um, up in the Lubbock area, you know, the you know, like Texas Panhandle area. But um, there there was like one place that we would go to barbecue or or two places. But one of them was Katie's Barbecue, okay. um, which it stands for Kathy and Dwight. And they're they're amazing. Uh, Freeman, they're they're amazing family. And I'm, I'm still connected to them. Oh, that's cool. um, and, and they're they're in Midland. But um, and, and their son graduated uh, in Greenwood as well. But, um, that was like the one spot. And then there was one other place, um, you know, that that's, it's, it's been burned down, but there really wasn't a whole lot of barbecue and there's no lakes in West Texas. So for us, it was always like, we're going to Fredericksburg or going here and going there. So I got to experience central Texas style barbecue before it, like, I mean, it was big, but like now it's like on the map and I was experiencing all these places before they even, you know, were, you know, big or, you know, no, it was all the whatever. like pre Aaron Franklin stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Pre Aaron Franklin. I mean, the Kreitz, the Smitty's, the blacks, like we used to go to these places. And I remember as a kid, I, I loved it. Every time we drove into the hill country, I could just smell that. Like in West <laughs> Texas, we smell mesquite <laughs> and you know, my dad, he used mesquite and actually he used uh, hickory um, as well. But like we would get into the hill country and that those are those memories Besides my dad, my dad's cooking that I, I remember just every time it was like it would bring me just this, you know, it's like I want to live here one day. And <laughs> guess what? I'm living in Central Texas. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know what's so funny is I tell everybody, I said, I'm going to end up in Texas again. Like it's yeah. just going to happen. This, and and when you were a kid walking around these these iconic places like like Smitty's yeah. and would, would would you go check out the wood or would you see the fires that are? Well, um, it, it, was the, it was the fires. I remember it was the fires was like the, the big thing. You know, as a kid, I think. You know that um, it, you know that the fire and, and all that. You know lighting and all, like yeah. It's, no, I love it too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All of your you know your your you know you've got all these emotions and and you know like your I don't know just everything you, you know you're just kind of like attracted to it almost like a you know like um, you know bugs are attracted to light like that's how it is you know as a little kid but uh, I just you know it was just so cool and I and I remember that just very distinctly like that was the one thing that always had. Um, you know, and I keep saying my dad barbecuing that besides what he did is I always was like, I had this love for food. Like mm -hmm. it was always, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I, I weigh 210 pounds now, but like when I was growing up, I was a skinny kid, like a really skinny kid. 
but I love to eat. You know, I mean, it wasn't until like I went to basic training 140 and came out weighing 180 and everyone's like, what the heck happened to you? And I'm like, well, I hit, you know, my growth spurt finally. And, you know, like three hots in a cot, like it was an exercise. Yeah, exactly. Was great. Exercising so, all now, the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now that was your dad grilling. Was he grilling or offset? Was yeah, he, he, he so so he did grilling and then he did the original um I guess you could say ugly drum. So it was the old Brickman, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. vertical, vertical smoker. Yeah. And um, I remember that uh, I, I keep saying I remember, but the, the main thing with him was, is that every Sunday, um, you know, my mom and dad, they, they busted their rear ends and, you know, we had 13 acres right in the prime and they still have it right in the prime spot of Greenwood oh. um, that I think a lot of people kind of, misconstrued it as like we were well off or whatever but my parents bought this you know well in advance and like struggled to keep this but it was like every sunday if my dad wasn't out on a drilling rig or or working or my you know whatever the case may be it was like your your rear end is gonna be with the family like you know if you got something yeah exactly like we were we were family oriented like every sunday you know it's always i always remember his smoked chicken it was um, a lemon pepper base that he used but the one thing that was kind of funny is that he would put that water pan in there, but he would add beer and potatoes. And so, like, uh, I would always love the potatoes at the end because they tasted like beer. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to get drunk. But obviously, the alcohol is, like, <laughs> dissipated. And he used Olympia, like, the crappiest beer, you know. But You know what's funny is, is I have a fond I, I, – there's, like, a, a fond spot in my memory. Yeah. I, I went across country with some friends when I was a kid. And we stopped uh-huh. – in not kid. I was 19, 20. But we, stopped, yes. it, it, but we had <laughs> Olympia when we were in Washington. And we uh-huh. loved it then because we didn't know what we were drinking. But, exactly. But now if I have it, I, like, if I see it somewhere, I'll – I'll order it because exactly it's, it's not exactly. the best. <laughs> so, but it was just awesome, you know. Just and that was the big thing with my with my dad. And then and then Saturdays, um, you know, when I was younger, he he had a lot of stress on him. But one thing he always did was he always grilled steaks on Saturdays as well. Like or at least he at least attempted, you know, to do that because there was times where he was always gone or whatever. But majority of the times grilling steaks he had speakers outside oh, that's and nice. he would listen to this old like you know bob dylan and and things like he listened to uh, different genres but i always remember bob dylan playing and like that actually is a love of music that i have nowadays too you know it's just all these memories that my dad used to do it's just like it's amazing you know it's, it it's, sounds like we yeah, live we know. lived a very similar life except for i was yeah. in the, the suburbs i wasn't there. yeah exactly there you go yeah so but it, it was good man and life is good you know i I've had fallen outs with my parents, but I mean, mainly that's just me, me and my dad, like we're, we're like the same and we're like, I'm adopted, but it's the funniest thing because I butt heads with him. That's so, we're funny. so headstrong, but it's good. You know, it's, it's really good. How did so. you, t- did you go straight to the military after? Uh, so, so that was the thing was that, you know, my parents, they, um, they, they said, Hey, we'll pay for college. Like you're on the gravy train. You know, every Sunday we'll take you to go get uh, groceries because by that time they didn't really hold me to that standard of coming home as long as I would at least attempt to go to church. And then, you know, but I, I tried to go to college for two semesters, man. And I just, you know, high school in general, I, I mean, school in general was tough for me. I think that I just didn't apply myself. So the two years of college was I was enrolled. So it was like, OK, you're off the gravy train. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah. And so I joined the army at 19. And, uh, I never looked back, you know, I, I, um, they gave me two choices. They said, all right, you know, you can go this Ranger route, you know, this rip contract, or you can go to, uh, be a, uh, an infantryman, which it would have been the same job, um, an infantryman, but you can go to Hawaii. And I'm like, uh, I'll go to Hawaii, please. <laughs> you know, it was like, yes, you know, so a West Texas boy going to Hawaii. I think so. And what did, know, what so. was what were your duties in Hawaii? What was, what was so that about? um so you know I went to basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia, and the way our basic training works is it's basic training and our uh, advanced individual training, but we call it advanced in, uh, infantry training. So literally, it's 14, 15 weeks long, and so after I got done with that, you know I'm an infantryman. I have a blue cord, which everyone's always like, "What does Rosser's blue cord mean?" That was the infantry blue cord. You know, I still I'm still an infantryman today, but that was it. Um, and then, you know, I go to Hawaii and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be rainbows and, you know, waterfalls and beach time. <laughs> no, I was far from wrong. Then I mean, I enjoyed all of that. But, you know, I was an infantryman there. I mean, we we were light infantry. So everything we carried was on our backs, 100 pound rucksacks on our backs. You know, we're walking 25 miles 
uh, you know, road marches every quarter. And, you know, we, we trained a lot in the, the we call it the Kahukus and the Kualoas, which is north, uh, north, um, or, you know, the north side. It's a Oahu uh, or Big Island? Oahu. Oahu. Yeah, Oahu. it was a Oahu. Okay. So, so we'd be looking down at Turtle Bay Resort, you know, thinking like, man, look at all these girls down there, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, look how sunny it is. But guess where we were up there, you know, in the, in the, like the, the rainforest, yeah, it's, it's raining on us and we're training, you know, so. But it were was you a lot. Of were fun. you tra- were, they, were they training you for like jungle operations or? What? Yeah, yeah, jungle jungle warfare basically because at the time September 11th hadn't happened. Okay. So um, I was pre September 11th. Um, so the first uh, like eight months that I was in the army, well, besides basic training, you know, we were just training, you know, just jungle warfare, jungle jungle tactics, all of that. Um, and then we uh, we did a rotation in in uh, Australia, which. I call it a rotation. It was really 30, 45 days. Hmm. Uh, and September 11th happened. And we were in Australia. And I'll never forget. Yeah, what was that like you finding know? out? Oh, yeah, man. I've never heard from anybody in the military what that was yeah. like. So let's just say, you know, beforehand, there was no gate guards. Like in Hawaii, there was no gate guards. You could basically come and go as you please um, through through base and all that. So we're in Hawaii. Uh, we're in Australia. And uh, this happens. And they're waking us up in the middle of the night. And they're like, you know, you're not going to believe this. And our commander's telling us what, what just happened. And we're watching it on this little small, small TV. I mean, you know, 13 inch TV. <laughs> wow. And we're sitting there just like, wow, this is crazy. This is insane. Like we're going to go to combat, like, you know, and, and we were a very close knitted c- company anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it was only company size element. And so we already, we were like, oh, we're going to go to combat. Like they're going to make us deploy from here. Uh, cause we're, you know, we and, and obviously that's not going to happen, but but, it, but um, it felt like it felt like it was going to be a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It, we, and that's exactly what it felt like. So um, I remember we were on our way back because they pulled us out of the field, um, and they were on our way back. And we're, like the way that their vehicles work, they don't work like a like a big army truck you see where there's flaps, you know, coming down. We're actually facing out. Um, you know, like, like say if a truck is going northbound, we're facing out eastbound and westbound. Like, I mean, we're facing oh, out like, a, gotcha. you know, yeah, exactly. And so there was people passing by us and I'll never forget this truck passed by us and it had, you know, America under attack and it had the, the towers. I mean, it, I just got chills thinking about it and talking oh. about it. And it, it just like, I was like, this is surreal. Like, this is very surreal. So we had a weekend out and, um, of course, you know, we were chanting and everything like we were basically pumping yourselves up USA, all that. Um, and then it was time for us to go home or well, we're going home through the actual, you know, through the airport, uh, there in Brisbane. And, you know, we have our weapons because, you know, you, you don't, you don't load your weapons in some rack or whatever. And then yeah. they, they no, we're flying commercial. And I mean, the Australians were chanting for us and it was, it was, it was crazy to think that, that, and that's what it's tough about the world today, but the world at, at that point, where, where everyone was combined and we were united it did and, feel that and way. it's so tough you know mm-hmm. it's so tough but um they were chanting for us and then we get back to hawaii we have a full-on escort from the airport all the way back up to schofield barracks and then we get there and we see constantina wire we see gate guards wow it's changed. i mean everything imaginable and it, it was like an overnight change i mean it was just crazy wow. just crazy mm, and it, and it so, had probably hasn't changed since I'm no sure. no it hasn't i mean it, it's it, everything you know obviously they've the security is tighter i mean it was tight then i mean it was super super tight yeah you weren't gonna get in probably type. but yeah yeah exactly so you just want to stop and, and like, we the were, rogue element or something or the yeah yeah exactly and we were we were doing the um the uh the gate guard as well which you know units still do that but uh, you know uh bef- you know getting to getting too into that but um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you know, it's just crazy. It was just crazy, man. It was, it's chaos. So, so, that, so at that point, what was, at what point did you get deployed? Did you go home first? So, or? so um, so I got back, uh, to, we got back to Hawaii and then, um, you know, it, it was, uh, my time to leave Hawaii and I had already chosen, I had already reenlisted for Fort Hood for, for here where I'm at now. So I got here in 03, um, basically late 03. And um, I was here for a week and then deployed to uh, to Iraq for oh. for the re- remainder of the time. I think that it ended up being like eight months, uh, eight month deployment. So had we um, had we already we hadn't invaded or we were yeah, just well, invaded? no, we had already invaded. In fact, uh, I was I've met up with fourth ID. Um, 
So, you know, third ID kind of came in and, and fourth ID came in and, and what have you, but we were already established. Okay. And so where I came in, I was on the Iranian border. Um, so the North, um, Northeastern side of Iraq. And, you know, it was, um, it was, it was crazy because these guys had already been there. They got the unit I met up with, um, great bunch of guys and they welcomed me in. In fact, one of the guys was from, uh, basically like a guy I went to basic training with. So it was really cool to see that and see how our careers had gone in the last three years. But, uh, they welcomed me in and, you know, I was a young kid then I was, you know, 20, um, 22 23 something like that and you know it didn't that deployment didn't so much affect me other than my personal life which i you know i don't really get into that piece but i I went through a divorce basically and so um but my personal like that's what messed me up per se but um you know i was i was so army still then it was like it was focusing on on my military career so and at that age um, you're kind of you feel a little invincible and yeah yeah, exactly and i think that's what it was is i felt invincible and um, you know, they had, they had, um, our company had suffered a loss, um, prior to me getting there, but I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, um, you know, specialist Pertle and our corporal Pertle, but I, I didn't know him. So it, it was tough for me because it was like, man, you know, all these guys are kind of, you know, they're, they're suffering from that, but I just, I just did what I do, you know, I was motivated and, and, you know, and, and basically, um, you know, just did, just did what I did. I mean, we, you know, as an infantryman, we just, you know, adapt and overcome, you know, so. How many tours in Iraq did you do? Uh, so I just did that one. Uh, that was the, from 0304. Okay. Um, funny story, you know, I got back in 04 and they were like, so we're making all these infantrymen recruiters. And I was like, dude, I did not join the army to be a recruiter, you know. For it's sales like, all the heck? Yeah. So they asked me, they were like, um, you know, if you, you have to do this, so where do you want to go? And I'm like, well, you know, I just went through, um, you know, went through a divorce, whatever, you know, I was like, well, I want a fresh start. Let me go to California. So, uh, they're like, okay, you're going to San Luis Obispo, California slow. And I'm like, slow. What does that even mean? You know, they're like, Oh, it's short for San Luis Obispo. I was like, Oh, okay. Duh. You know? So (laughs) anyway, yeah, exactly. You know? So I start looking it up and my dad actually, um, you know, he starts looking up, he's like, son, you know, we're German background because, you know, obviously his last name, our last name is Rossler. He's like, dude, there's a big German, you know, community there or not community, but just like the influence. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking like, OK, like, you know, I start looking up and Cal Poly's there and and uh, and everything. And so I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. And and then I got there and then it was it was a whole lot of fun. Like it was it's it was a, stressful it's a great city. Was, I, I love San Luis Obispo. Oh beautiful beautiful city you know the first first two and a half years because i was there for almost four years first two and a half years um <clears throat> i was real focused and and whatever and um i i had a great group of it was just civilian friends it was one army guy that was a recruiter but he was single too and so it was a great group of friends but they were all getting ready to graduate so they graduated and left and so i was kind of you know, and he, he actually left too. And so it was like me by myself and I already went to the bars anyways, cause I'm a single guy, like, hello, <laughs> like, you know, where are you going to go? And the bar that I always went to black sheep, um, I, I started working there as a, as a door guy oh. and then, you know, bar back. And then, um, and then, and so this is all moonlighting obviously. Uh, and then I would go behind the bar and, and I would, you know, as a bar back, but I would, I would bartend a little bit, but it was mostly bar backing. And then for that next, like, you know, year and a half or whatever, um, year and a half, two years, it, it like basically I formed all these great friends that I'm still really good friends with oh, now. That's fantastic. Um, I just, I just haven't been out there in forever, you know, and it, it it's family, you know what I mean? I, I have a family now, so it's different for me. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a single guy buys a plane ticket and goes out there and then sleeps on couches, you know, and now it's like, <laughs> it's a little bit more, you know. But, I, but it so, is somewhere, if you know. are, if you come to visit Los Angeles and have a couple of days, it's a great, yeah. just driving up there through Santa Barbara, Dude, then up there, it's, it, it it, it's perfect. good for your soul. Yeah, it, it really is. It clears your soul. And, you know, no matter what people say about California, you know, a lot of people get, oh man, California, they have all these rules and regulations. I'm like, no matter what, like California is like a second home to me and it always will be. Wow. Always, I didn't know this. Always will be, you know, so, but it's awesome. Slow is slow is awesome. And then. So then fast forward, 
I had a couple, couple, uh, like I had like 18 months till I retired or not retired, but, um, we're, I was going to get out of the army and I, I was pretty much done because, you know, I, I talk so highly of recruiting, but, or, 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 or slow, but my recruiting time there was so rough on me because it was Darren Bush's air. Um, it was in California, which no offense. Cause you know, uh, I love my California families, but, um, the people there just weren't accepted of the, of the, um, of the war going mm-hmm. on, you know, and, and I get it. Like I, I understand it. Um, but that so is the mindset lucky. and you were in a college town too. And a, yeah. 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 And, and our, and our higher ups, they especially didn't care. They were like, we, we had, um, we had a, um, a station just South of us down in, uh, Santa, uh, Santa Mar- uh, Maria, like every single one of them were fired because they were doing something like they were doing illegal, like recruiting stuff. <laughs> And they were like, I remember our chain of command was like, well, at least they were trying. And I looked at them. I'm like, what did you just say? (laughs) At least they were trying. Are you kidding me? So I had a bad taste in my mouth of of the army after that. So, um, so anyways, fast forward, I had to go somewhere because I had some time left. And so they sent me to Fort Jackson, literally on the other side of, you know, of the United States, exactly the same mileage from my parents' house to slow but my parents house now to south carolina where i stationed, like literally like i think a couple miles off like couldn't have been the more crazier you know story <laughs> and so i worked at a grenade range for basic training and let me tell you something man like i got my motivation back but like that was that was like like being in combat you have these brand new soldiers throwing live hand grenades and you're like dude what is going on you know i didn't even know you that's know? something i didn't even realize that was something people did still yeah wow. <laughs> well it was cool though because like majority of the time you know um i think what well, basic is eight weeks long so um we were getting soldiers that had like seven weeks into it and then and then you know once they graduate they go to their advanced individual training whatever their job is but so we we're getting soldiers that were like really kind of they, they had, they knew, you know, the standards and disciplines of the military. Well, we had one time we had a week, like week one soldiers. So basically week zero, they didn't even like, they weren't even shaved properly. Their uniforms look like crap. So this, this female, I'll never forget it. You know, I, you're in the grenade range with them and you're basically kind of do everything for them. All they have to do is really throw it. Well, I tell her like, I'm, you know, uh, proper grip, you know, she put it in there, uh, thumb to clip, a thumb to clip, twist, pull, pin. And then, so like, as soon as they say twist, pull, pin, they're supposed to get up and get ready to throw the hand grenade. Well, she turns to the tower. Like, I mean, it was so quick. She turns to the tower and throws it. And I'm like, what in the heck is like, and so when she threw it, it like lobbed, but it didn't go towards the tower. It was in the, like the bay with us. And so I like, Actually, no, no, it went over, excuse me, so it went over just a little bit, but the bay, like it's, we had two sets of bays, so oh one God. was like higher than the other, so the the bottom piece that was lower had uh, like tire stuff in it in case it's inside the bay with you. Well, it wasn't in the bay, but it was in the tire place, like, you know, that like all the shredded up tire. So I threw her down so hard that I cracked her, her helmet that she had on, and I got on top of her, and of course the little wall that separates you from the tire stuff, it, you know, it protected us. But man, you talk about, Oh my gosh. I was like, oh my gosh. And like the rest of the day they sent me home. So it was, it was awesome. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. um, so, but anyways, um, so did you end up going to Afghanistan then or did you end up? Um, so I'm, I'm about to get into that, um, kind of crazy. Um, you know, I, I reenlisted for Fort bliss, uh, there in El Paso, Texas, and, and the reason why is I had um, I had to be like an OC, like basically an op, uh, observer for a, a unit doing some, um, you know, basically gearing up to go to Afghanistan or whatever. So uh, about 09, end of 09, I transferred to Fort Bliss, uh, brand new unit, brand new, like basically brigade all the way down. First Armored Division had just moved over from uh, from Germany. So there was no structure in place, none. Like and this is mind you, this is end of 2009. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be crazy because, you know, here I am. These these brand new privates are like, hey, what's up, man? Can I help you out with anything? And I'm like, I, you know, I'm a seasoned I'm a seasoned staff sergeant. And my mind is just like, what the heck did you just say? Like, <laughs> like, oh, start doing push ups. And I'm just like, you know, I'm aggro, you know, and I'm, you know. And so um, 
so anyways, we got past all that and the unit stood up and, you know, and I, I, we trained together for all the way up until 2011, uh, September when we deployed. So we were very, very, I mean, you're talking about the end of 2009, wow. um, all of 2010, pretty much all of 2011, we were very close and tight knitted, very, very close and tight knitted. Um, and then that's when we deployed, um, you know, let's, at, it was actually August, uh, of 2011. And so, um, you know, the guys are deployed with, this is, it, this is, I guess this will be probably the worst part of the, uh, of the interview for me, like just talking about this, but it, it's okay. good to talk about. Okay. Um, you can talk about whatever but, you want. Just Oh yeah. No, 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 no. But it's so, um, so we deployed and we were going to Wardak. So Wardak and, and, uh, the Afghan, you know, the, the province that, um, the RC, RC East is and RC South, you have all these different, so RC East. But basically, the province we were in, that's where the um, the Navy SEALs have been shot down and oh. and all of that. Um, and, and, you know, we lost we, we lost all the Navy SEALs. So our AO was already hot. Like our it was um, it, we already knew going into it that we're probably going to have casualties. And, and, you know, we were all thinking that we're none of us were going to make it back because it was just like we, we were trained up. We were ready to go. But just we were sort of like, man, the area we're going, it's it's, Very it's crazy you know, very dangerous. So, um, so, you know, we're there and we're, we're getting stood up down there and we're really finding, we have a good, um, you know, we have a good battle rhythm and, you know, we have our, our PL, um, our platoon sergeant, and then it was me. I was the weapon squad leader at the time. And December 3rd, um, 2011, we were on a mission. And w what we were doing was we were helping clear the road of IEDs for, um ongoing you know oh. convoys this is against and the taliban so, right the tal you're, you're, oh yeah. yeah yeah the taliban and all that so we were we were going to ghazni and um the way that it worked for us was we had an actual crew that th their sole purpose was basically ied follower you know that but it was a different mos so it was like the engineers so they had all these crazy you know machines and all that like basically you know all, all this crazy stuff but we were the guys that were pulling security for them walking as oh. they were slowly going over the roads. Oh. So we, you know, found a couple IDs, but EOD can't go with us. Like they have to stay back in case some stuff goes down and then they might have to go somewhere else or, you know, you have to kind of keep them centrally located. So we go back and get uh, EOD and we come back and we clear a couple of um, IDs and then they find another one. So by this time, traffic is already backed up. And we've cleared, we've already cleared the road. So we're like, okay, we're good. So we finally get this last ID and we are like, okay, set, turn, turn around. So we're on our way back, um, back to our cop. And I'm the first vehicle, my PL's the second. And then we have, you know, several other vehicles behind us. Well, my platoon sergeant, he was the, uh, the seventh vehicle and um, rolling along and boom. Um, you know, two sevens been hit, two sevens been hit, IED, two sevens been hit. Oh. And man, you talk about, um, you know, the seventh vehicle, number one, you're like, okay, the seventh vehicle, like, hopefully it was just like the rear end or something like some idiot just, you know, he, he was sleeping, whatever. Like, so he was asleep. It was supposed to be my vehicle. So automatically, you know, I, I don't think about any of that. Obviously I look at my driver and I didn't have to say anything. He was pale white. And he turned like we are big MRAPs, you know, these big old up armored vehicles. And he turned that sucker like it was, you know, like a, you know, a, a sports car. And we were the first. Um, we we're actually we were the second. Our PL had already been there and kind of set up. Um, you know, he was calling in, calling in, freaking, um, you know, everybody calling, you know, calling up a nine line. Yeah. And the vehicle's on its driver side, so we call that the TC, the truck commander side. So that's my platoon sergeant side. Now, mind you. Um, the driver for him is my soldier, like falls under me. Uh, the gunner is my soldier. And then the medic, he, he falls technically under the platoon sergeant, but he always stayed with like with under me basically. And then we had an interpreter from Afghanistan oh. and, you know, um, our medic, uh, you know, Ed, Ed, um, Doc Acosta, you know, he was, he was in the back and he wasn't moving. I mean, he was talking to us, but he wasn't moving. And we're like, Oh my God. So we get him out, um, and then, you know, um, Specialist Mayberry, you know, he's he's in a gunner's hatch, but obviously, you know, at KIA, you know, KIA. So we pull him out, and you know, we're, we're trying to get them, 
you know, get them back, get the, you know, we, we, we had obviously um, another platoon come in and help us out. Like they got him back to the cop. And then my, that at this time, the truck is on fire. Like the truck is engulfed in flames and it's on the truck commander side, the tires on fire. But if, if you've ever seen a burning tire, you know, it's, it's insane. So it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. So we, you know, we crawl in there, me and a couple other guys, like we're taking all of our equipment. We're taking fire, mind you at this time. And you so know, this was an ambush kind of like a, almost... yeah, basically trying to be an ambush. Yeah, yeah, trying. Um, we take small arms fire, not, not much, but some, you know, some small arms fire. Um, but we've already set up a great perimeter and that guys still as they couldn't have done a better job. Second platoon, like punishers, like two, five, like we were, you know, action company as a whole, like action company, our, our company was awesome. But, um, so that I'm thinking like, I'm like, guys, we have to flip this truck. Like we have to flip this truck to see if we can get one of the doors open. Cause we just can't get, you know, we can't get in there. There's smoke coming in. You know, I came in, came out, like a couple other guys came in, came out now, where the truck is, you have a hole and then like, say here's like where the, you know, the TC and the driver are, there's a small little area right in through like the vehicle, like say if the vehicle's turned up here, there's a small little area that you can come into to get, you know, to them, to them. And we just, we couldn't get in there cause there's so much black smoke and, you know, and it's like, Oh my God, like this is insane. So we flipped the vehicle over. Like we, I mean, it was so quick. I just remember the guys and I was so proud of it. But they flipped the vehicle, you know, over on its side or, you know, back up. Yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, the, the the door handles all smashed in the you know, and the vehicles just and we just we just couldn't get to them. We just, oh. you know, and oh. um, it kills me to this day. You know, their families, um, you know, I've talked to all their families and, you know, it I just it haunts me. It haunts me daily. It haunts me. And, oh, and I've so gone sorry. through a lot of. Yeah. You know. A lot of it. I mean, I've gone through a lot with that. Um, so um, that was this, you know, December 3rd, 2011. And then unfortunately, um, you know, March and it's it's coming up, you know, um, that, uh, you know, March 5th is coming up that 2012 uh, Doc, he didn't make it. Dr. Costa, he didn't make it. And he's him and him and Mayberry were both from California. Um, and, you know, it just. Um, Oh. You know, it sucks, man. It's I'm really so sucks. sorry. Like, uh, you know, just, that kills me. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's that's actually part of what Rosser's Blue Cord Barbecue stands for is, you know, is that I, I basically, you know, I'm doing all this, not not just for them. I'm doing it for myself, obviously, but I'm following my passion because I know that's what they would want. Mm -hmm. And I know that's like if it, if I was them, I would want them to do the same. You know what I mean? And not just live in this, you know, self pity and, and, and which we do, you know, as veterans yeah, yeah. and active duty members that gone through this crazy stuff we do. So, um, fast forward, you know, like we, the, the whole, the whole, you know, basically almost a whole year, it was rough. I mean, we, we, uh, air assaulted, I think we had the most air assaults, the most, um, you know, um, um, you know, most bombs basically JDAMs dropped in, in that particular time frame. Wow. Um, and, and we were, I mean, we were air assaulting in the, in the middle of winter when it's not even fighting season, but we were fighting. Um, but, um, you know, we, we, the rest of us, we made it back, a um, couple scratches and bruises and, and, and things like that. But uh, the rest of us, we made it back. And um, I was in El Paso for, um, I had, had gotten orders to go to Fort, to come to Fort Hood again, but I was in El Paso for the next like four or five months. Okay. Um, and then um, just just trying to find myself and, you know, we had barbecues and cookouts and things um, just to kind of, kind of collect, you know, yeah. keep each other intact, but it just wasn't the same, you know, it just, it just wasn't the same. So um, I had orders to come to Fort Hood as a, as an instructor. And, you know, I, um, I wasn't too sure about instructing is basically the future leaders of, of the army. So when you're enlisted, the lower enlisted, um, before you become an E5, or if you're an E5 or a, a sergeant, you have to go through what's called a uh, basic leader course. Uh, it's, it's, it's been warrior leader course. And even before that primary development leader course, but okay. anyways, you know, um, so that's what I was doing, you know, and I get there and I'm not, I haven't recovered from any of like what happened in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. because basically I kind of, I kind of took it upon myself to be the dad, like now that we you know we lost our platoon sergeant and everything. And, and we ended up getting another guy to help us, you know, 
help us out. But I was like the glue that kind of kept everybody together. So I never showed any emotion. or Yeah. So you couldn't break down. You couldn't really uh, deal with it. Nothing. Yeah. My PL and I, in fact, my PL and I, we talk all the time, but now I'm dealing with all these things. I'm drinking heavily. I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. And, you know, I get there and I'm supposed to be this like, you know, creases in my uniform and like good haircut and all this stuff. And I just, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have it in me, you know? And so, um, you know, I kind of, I, I broke down and I, I just told him like, Hey, I need to get help. Uh, which was, was rough on me to, to even as a man, number one, oh, as so an infantry man, you know? So, um, basically, you know, I started getting help and then the chain of command, they, um, they, it was time for them to leave. And so we got a new chain of command. And when we did, um, the Sergeant major that came in, there's two Sergeant majors, but the, the deputy commandant, uh, Salvador Montez, which I am still very close with, he, um, you know, him and I, um, kind of formed a quick bond I, where I was at was I was like in the operations section cause they didn't want me down teaching the soldiers or whatever, but I was like kind of behind the scenes of how everything ran. And he was like, you're, we're going to get you right. You're going to get, you know, I, I needed back surgery. So I've had my back fused together, wow. uh, from just certain, you know, things that happened to me in Afghanistan. Um, and so, um, that really that mentorship really kind of motivated me to get better and by this time i had met my wife and literally um it was kind of funny because i came home right after december 3rd happened i came home around december 20th and i had met my wife at a salon a friend of mine was cutting uh cutting my hair but like my wife worked there and she was engaged at the time and so um you know i just it was like hey how you doing oh hey how you doing okay whatever like you know it's like what so I kept in like not in contact with her, but I, I think I friend requested her. I was like, oh, I, I know this person. I friend request them, you know, whatever. And so, um, so fast forward, you know, now it's um, I think what 2000. Let's see, we're looking at 2014, 15 ish. And so I had just gone through a horrible breakup. Uh, her and her fiance didn't work out, and she posted something, and it was like, you know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get my mind right, but I'm like, yeah, hey, uh, like, you know, trying to motivate her to or whatever. And I said something. She's like, oh, thank you. Like, and, I, you know, I had DM'd her, you know, and um, she's like, oh, thanks. Do I know you? And I'm like, oh, crap, man. I really didn't make it a, like an impression on her, you know. So so anyways, I courted her, um, did all that fun stuff. And, and like, um you know, shortly thereafter we started dating, like we got pregnant right away. (laughs) So we did everything opposite, you know, but, um, you know, it's, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It does. No, it doesn't. But, um, you know, she's, she was like, basically like, if you want to be with Paisley and I, you want to, you know, then get your stuff together. Cause, um, if not, then you're going to lose us, you know? And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen, you know? Um, so anyway, so, you know, she was another factor of why I got myself better or her and my daughter, um, my first daughter. And so, um, so that's what kind of led me into barbecue. Now yeah. Yeah. What was that? Is, what, what was the, so, so basically it's kind of funny, man, you know, like before, even before her, like, even like the kind of start of Fort Hood, I, I, I met a good group of friends and most of us were single. So I'd barbecue and stuff like that. And it was the old, um, um, old offset, but they're like the ones you buy it at Walmart, you know, the crappy, yeah. you know, like they're the Brinkman or, or I can't remember the name. Um, but anyways, you know, they're very paper thin, yeah, almost, super thin and, metal. Yeah. But you know, I made it work, you know, and it, and so, so anyways, I did all that. And then, um, then with her, she was like, this stuff is really good. Like, you know, and then friends come over, they want you to make stuff for them. So what are you doing? You know? And so my dad had cooked a brisket way back in the day. And, you know, I never really dove into that, but I was like, okay, well, let me watch this Aaron Franklin video. Everyone talks about this Aaron Franklin video. Let me talk, you know, so I, I cook a brisket first time, great smoke ring. I didn't let it cook long enough, but it was almost like to that point, it was very tender, nice bark. Um, took it to a friend of mine that had cooked print plenty of briskets. And he was like, man, you got something here. You, you have something good here, but you know, you need to cook it a little bit longer. And I'm like, yeah, no, like, you know, <laughs> so anyways, um, so you know, I start really diving into it and really start, okay, this is something I really want to do. And, and, and I'm already thinking 
long term wise, what am I going to do when I get out of the army? And I'm like, man, this is this is really fun. Like this is and every time I go work with Brett or I go work with all these other people, like this is his full time. This is his gig. Like he he gave up the workforce and you know his 401k and and like you know everything like, like a really good job his, at Dell, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean everything like his amazing job at Dell and like you know he he's on edge of that because that's just how Brett is. Like he's always like you know his mind's thinking and he's you know he's kind of and and I think a lot of that comes from his uh, competition background too because True. he has to be so serious. It's like it's time to do this. Well, for me, it's always fun and games. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way, meaning like this is like I can walk away from this at any point. It's just this is what soothes my soul, soothes mm-hmm. my PTSD, soothes everything in life. This is so I, I love working with Brett because I always try to make him laugh and I pick at him. We pick at each other like we're brothers. But at the end of the day, I think that's why we get along so well is that, you know, I'm kind of like the jokester. And then, you know, he's like the serious guy. I don't have time to be, you know, uh, joking around. And I'm like whatever dude like it's not that serious like just messing with him because <laughs> everything his mind like the way his mind thinks i'm already two steps ahead of him that's mm-hmm. how it that's how like as friends you know and and uh, as in, in the army i need to be two steps ahead of anybody you know and so we do caterings like if i do a catering for him he's like oh you know this i'm like brett i got it like you just walk it, yeah. away i've got it you know and he can we're unloading the trucks and i'm like setting up everything and he's like Oh yeah, you do got it. I'm like, yeah, dude, you know. So, so anyways, but um, but back then, how did you did yeah. you reach out to Brett? Did you somehow meet? No, him? so it's funny, man. Um, you know, it being such a labor of love for me, you know, number one is I knew I needed to buy a bigger pit. So I found, you know, I was like looking for all these pits and everything, and I found this knockoff Jambo. Um, it was on a trailer. It had a sink in it and all this, and I was like, well, wow, it's a little bit too much for me, but. Now it's like, I'm like, this is way too small. Like it's 40, it was 48 inches. But to me, that was huge. And yeah. plus it had a, an insulated firebox and all this. So, um, uh, um, you know, Dwayne, he's, um, he, he actually works up in, um, he, he's a competition guy, but he, he works up at Metals to Go there and, and Hewitt outside of Waco, but met him, um, kind of, he talked to me about doing competitions. Like, ah, I ain't going to do that, dude. But anyways, bought the trailer from him and, um, you know, I'll call it, um, um, you know, the Duke or whatever. So that was like the earlier pit. Um, and then I started, I was like, you know what? I need to go out to Miller's. Cause I think the, um, the, um, it hadn't come out yet. The top 50 hadn't come out yet, but I was looking online of like places to go. So I go to the original Miller's, which is funny. You have their hat on because, uh, when you, when you had that on, I was like, this interview couldn't have been more perfect because you know, it was just awesome. Um, it's like so it, actually one of my favorite meet, hats. It's awesome, you know. <laughs> so, um, I'd already bought some meat church, uh, meat church rub, you know, Matt Pittman stuff, but I'd never met Matt Pittman or any of that. But I followed him, so I had a meat church shirt on, and I walk into the old uh, Millers, and Zach, um, you know, he works for Forty Four Farms now, but he was doing all their like, you know, their logos and their their, their branding um, and everything, and so he welcomes me like with open arms. Oh man, meat church, like. Hey, yeah, this and that. And like, oh, I know Pat, Matt, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so I'm like, dude, this is how the barbecue community is. This is like how the army is. Like, this is a brotherhood. You know, it's I can so just much. see it, you know. And so that's a great like, analogy. Yeah, I, didn't, I never thought yeah, about it that way. Yeah. It's it's perfect, you know. And they take me back to the outside, mind you. It's like their pit. They had a pit lineup, you know. It was like, was that I like in an alley almost or something? Or Yeah, it was I like the alley. Saying, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. on the side of the building. And, uh, you know, I met, um, uh, you know, I met the, the two brothers, Dusty you know, and... um, yeah, yeah. All of them. And I met, uh, you know, I met Dirk and, you know, I, you know, I love, I love the Miller family because, um, they have always welcomed us in and, and Amadeo as well. You know, they've always welcomed us in with like open arms, like my wife and I, and obviously our family too. But, um, you know, it was just like, I was like, this is what it's all about. Like they were such a close tight knitted family and, and everything. And I was like, man, this is perfect. So, um, so I kept in contact with them. Um, and then, um, Matt was given a, a class, like a competition class. And so I, um, I, I signed up for it and it was right outside of, um, Fort Worth there. It was in the Fort Worth area where my brother lives in Mansfield, just South of Fort Worth. So, um, we're, we're late uh, because I had to leave from Fort Hood. I had to work like night prior. 
So I call on them. They're like, yeah, don't worry. Like, you're fine. Like, just come up here. So we get up there and I meet, you know, meet finally like the class is going on. And then Matt's like, oh yeah, you're the army guy, dude. Like, I'm glad you made it, you know? And like <laughs> me and Matt have actually kept in contact like ever since. And people like, I'm a, you know, I go to barbecue places or, you know, like barbecue, uh, like Red Dirt. Red Dirt was ever, uh, was the first time. But I'd go there and like people were like, you know, even Brett was like, how the heck do you know Matt? Like, and I'm like, oh man, I email him, you know, every once in a while we t- talk or whatever. They're like, okay, like what the heck, you know? So, <laughs> so Matt's um, a good, he's really a cool great. dude. He's just, a... yeah, really, really. Um, and I met Cody Smithers, you know, they had, uh, oh. uh, bet the house, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, bet the house. And unfortunately they're not, not open anymore. So, um, really really great uh kind of first meeting the barbecue comp you know or the barbecue community um and then it was like okay this is what i want to do this is you know i'm telling you know telling Kristen like this is what i want to do are you on board and she's like yes i have restaurant experience she has like eight nine years of manager restaurant experience back home and you know just awesome and i'm like okay let's do this and now mind you she gets to retire a lot sooner than I do. So like, even though like this is work for us, like this is our retirement. And so, you know, she's 10 years younger than I am. I'm about to be 38. So she's 28. So she gets a little bit easier ride in life and not, not really easy ride because our girls keep her and she does a really good job um, with our family. But, but anyways, I started looking at pits and, you know, this is like Instagram. I started really getting on Instagram and I see this guy, uh, Flores barbecue, Mike, you know, Michael. And I'm like, I'm like, man, that is the pit I want. Like I've searched and searched and searched. I've found these Franklin style and I've reached out to Austin Smokeworks. They're not, they're not hitting me back. Um, I reached out to a couple different pit makers. They're not wanting to do what I want to do. So I reached out to Michael and I DM him and he's like, hits me right back. And I'm like, oh, thank God. He's like, yeah, man, my buddy, Sonny. And I'm thinking, Sonny, like, that's a guy's name. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and so I see this picture, like, it's kind of like a small Instagram. And I think it was Moberg Medals at the time. And it shows Sonny with his cowboy hat on. And he's standing on the top grade of Michael's three door, like that weird 750, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. original Moberg. And I'm like, well, this is a country guy. Like, I can get down with this. Like, I need to go meet this Sonny guy, you know. He's like, hit up Sonny. And it was like that day. Um, I had something going down, down in Austin while I was like, I called Chris and I was like, Hey, I'm about to go meet our pit builder. Like, I think this guy is going to be the guy, you know? And I was like, she's like, don't get your hopes up because you know, you met so many people and you're like, you just can't find the right person. I'm like, okay. I was like, well, his address is seven, seven, seven. And, um, and I have this tattoo on me, seven, seven, seven and a half. And so I was like, man, this might be like, you know, and, and this address is from when I was in slow and it's like this brotherhood thing that we had going on anyways. So I was like, I think this might be it. So I go out and meet Sonny and Sonny's just out there piddling around and like finishing up Michael's, you know, he didn't have like these massive, like, you know, uh, uh, propane tanks like he does now. And I'm like, we meet and we both get chills. We're talking about like the address and he's thanking me for my service. And we're talking about, you know, this or that. And I, I give him a coin that I, um, like I had received, um, you know, somewhere in my career and it was actually really high, high coin. Like it was, it was a pretty big coin. Um, it was a general that I had received it from. And so, you know, I give him this coin and I'm like, I'm going to buy a pit from you. I was like, I don't have the money to put it down, but I will buy a pit from you. And he, he like, we shook hands and like, we were like, okay, this is going to happen. And so, um, Time went by and, you know, Sonny became this household name. But I'll tell you right now, Sonny did not stop texting me to tell me every like it was like every a week, but started into going to two weeks and then like a month. But he kept texting me. Um, and I know why it kind of dwindled away because he started getting busier and busier. Yeah. You can't just be texting Stephen Rossler, this normal dude, you know, but that was right. You know, when Brett had really kind of, he, he let, um, I think Robert Sierra borrow the OG, we call it the OG, the 500 and then Robert, uh, and then Ron, Ronnie Killian and then Terry blacks, you know, all these people just started ordering, but he kept texting me and saying, Steven, my, my, I'm getting pretty booked. I'm getting pretty booked. And I was like, thank you, Sonny. I appreciate you. Let me know. I just don't have the money. So, um, mind you, it's, um, 2000, I think it's 2016, let me think, uh, was it 2016? Yeah. Cause I paid off 2000. 
Yeah, so 2016, I think Brett was doing a pop-up, um, and I got to, uh, you know, he's doing a pop-up in his backyard doing this awesome stuff, and um, was it Christmas? Yeah, it was Christmas, and so anyways, um, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure my timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was when, yeah, because, yeah, okay, anyways, so yeah, that happened, and then um, I was like, you know, Sonny was there. So my wife and I, we made a Yeti cup. It had Rosser's Blue Court Barbecue on it. And on the other side, it had Moberg Smokers and it had his, you know, had his name. And I hand him the cup and I hand him a check and I said, it's time for me to get on that list. And we had done it. We had done a catering and it was like, that was the coolest thing ever. It was like, dude, we just gave Sonny Moberg like, yeah, we were on the list now. You know what I mean? And so um, that whole next year, you know, we did catering gigs. I had this awesome, awesome, awesome sniper rifle that I built. I mean, probably ten thousand dollars worth of stuff into it. Um, and uh, I had a, um, I, I call her my second mom. She, um, she, she bought it from me. She loves guns and stuff. Um, but you know, <laughs> she's older too, so I was like, dude, this is awesome. She, she bought it, and I, I think she probably bought it probably because she believes in me and believes mm. what I'm doing. And she, um, she's like. Uh, yeah, cool. And so I'll never forget sending that final payment to to Sonny. And it was like, dude, this is for real. Like we, you know, we have it paid off like December of 2017. And then obviously fast forward to this year when I picked it up. But um, yeah, when did you pick it up? You know, um, so October. Yeah, October. I think Sonny was done with it. In fact, I think it was your interview, your la- your interview with Sonny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, was. he was talking to you about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, that I had just picked it up. So, but um, it took know, me so long to get a hold of Sonny too because he was so oh, busy, and I kept like, God, man, I'm sure yeah, I was you, at, yeah, you didn't have this time like what you and I have right now. Yeah, know? I was like, yeah, I was probably the, that annoying guy from California. He's like, what is it? And then after he's like, okay, maybe I do. What? Um, he's a nice guy, man. <laughs> so I tell you nice, what, uh, but uh, you know, through Brett, Brett and I, and then Michael, obviously, um, you know, later on we met up as well because I only met Michael through Instagram and, but through Brett, really, I've. Brett and I, he's, he's branched me out to all these different people. And, and I've introduced him to some people too, like Mike, Matt, and a couple others, but, um, you know, Russell and John Brotherton and Michael and James from Reveille, um, all these different individuals, like, um, you know, the snows crew, I love the snows crew, you know, without the barbecue community, like I've really kind of, you know, intertwined with all these individuals, like, and people from all over, like Tyler, you know, Tyler Hart, he's getting ready to do his thing, but we've all meshed together and it's like, we come from all these different areas, but the one common goal is, is barbecue, Mm -hmm. barbecue. Um, well, I've gotten to meet, I've gotten to meet all these exceptional people like yourself and Tyler and all these, like, it's so awesome. Yeah. 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 Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, and, you know, um, Abe and, and Andrew, like the moot, the, the moose craft, um, you know, I, I love all them, you know, Cause they're from California mm-hmm. you know, Abe's obviously from Texas, but they're all doing their thing in California. All y'all are in California. But like I said, we all have this common uh-huh. goal and it's like community bring yeah. people together. Barbecue brings people together. And it's, um, yeah, I, te- I was texting a, I, was, I text Abe and Andrew yeah. and Michelle and Bert yeah. all yesterday. It was yeah, like, it's all these Dude, Yeah. Stuff. Well, I love seeing all your stuff when you go to slap, you know, it's like, it's so awesome seeing all that, 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 community y'all have going out there like it's just it's small right it's now growing, but i guarantee yeah. you it's blowing up mm-hmm. big time um but um you know we were just talking the other day uh, well actually me and andrew or we were talking about that tent that they have that they serve out of with the netting and all that and we're actually um we have something in the works right now which i posted uh what two days ago yeah big things that. coming for us and uh we have something big coming that we might be we're trying to work with a brewery where we won't be the only truck there but or or you know, trailer. Cause for us, it'll be a tent, um, and, and our smoker, but we're working something right now that it's, um, it's looking like, you know, every, every Saturday they're going to be like, especially the springtime probably won't happen until April, April, mid April. Cause we've got so much stuff going on, but start mid April all the way all summer long. And hopefully we can just keep it going. You oh, know, that's keep so it, great. Keep the ball rolling. I mean, we have 14 months to retire. It's like the catering is great. And that's what, I mean, we might just, stick with that but i have to get my name out there i have to get more clients so that my catering is once a week twice a week, you know twice a week whatever the case may mm-hmm. be you know um, well and that so, kind of like that feeds uh, i've noticed it a lot with like 
like with um moose craft barbecue i've noticed mm -hmm. how being out there more people start yep. following them more on instagram and then it just like mm -hmm. the lines grew and now there's two yep. hour line like it's yeah it's dude i mean it i mean come on like and you know i told because kristen didn't she she knows who they are because obviously man fire food but um last night i was showing her like yeah we're we're messaging each other right now she's like what and i'm like she's like why didn't you tell me this and i'm like I don't know, like, um, you know, she's like, oh, first Brotherton, because she, she, uh, I gave her John Brotherton's number, oh, um, so she could text him about something about like chicken fried steak or something. She's like, oh my god, I have a famous person's like, you know, their phone number, and I'm just like, oh that's god, a, no, it, it, but it does, but it's yeah. it's fun, and that's that's yeah. like, I hate to say cute, but it's it's cool. It's like it's, it it's is, really... it is, it it really is, you know, and um, you know, I've I've had the opportunity, um, you know. Leonard, you know, from Truth and 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 all of those guys, they're all, um, you know, and and I tell you one person that I really I really look up to, um, in in this in this game, and I I've I've met him one time face to face. We talk a lot, um, but it's Patrick Peaches, you know, because he's a Purple Heart. Um, you know, I have a Bronze Star with Valor uh, because of December third, yeah. um, but he is Purple Heart. I mean, he's he's like gone through it all. Like you know, he's been you know, everything. And so, yeah, his story on I, tales for the tales, you know, tales from the pits. Yeah. It's, like, it I got mean, me, it got me. So yeah. like, I, and I interviewed him prior and we didn't uh -huh. get into that. And I felt like right. such a jackass for not like getting into like, it yeah. Was, I, yeah, I respect him so much and he's such for a sure. great guy and him and Aaron yeah. are so nice. Yeah. 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 Him and Aaron are awesome. And you know, I, I love, I just, you know, I, I talked like we, we talked at the, the town hall and, you know, talking with him, was just awesome. But, um, uh, you know, just uh, there's a, actually there's a lot of people. You know, Russell he served. Um, yeah, Russell you know, too. Bob Bill, like Crazy Bill out there. Um, you know, at it, um, at the switch. You know, he served. Um, you know, there's there's quite a few people that have served. Cody Cody served in the Navy mm -hmm. or Navy or Coast. Yeah, I think Navy. Hopefully, Coast Guard now. But anyways, um, you know, but there's been a lot of people who served, and I think I'll be the first one that retires. Like I out of. Uh, at least the barbecue community that I know of that is retired out of the, out of the branch of service, you know? Oh. Um, so really cool. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next chapter. We, um, I'm scared cause we're going to stay in Colleen or Harker Heights, Colleen area. And, you know, we're not on 35, we're off of 35, you know, Miller's is on 35 and you have to get off 35 and you have to come in and, you know, Fort Hood area in general, it's tough. It's tough for small businesses because you have such a uh, fast turnover of soldiers. True. And so, you know, it's rough because, um, you know, you don't, you don't know what to expect. You know, you're like, you know, are we going to make it? But my wife and I are talking right now, we would really like to make a wedding venue as well. So like, basically we'd like to make a wedding venue, um, have a couple acres. Um, cause it's, it's really pretty out here. It's mm -hmm. really, really pretty. Now there's some rough areas, but obviously, we'd go out more towards the country, but make a wedding venue where people could come into. And then our house will be on the same property, but like it's kind of tucked away. And I'll, we're going to make a commercial kitchen. We're going to make a barn aluminum. So like a metal building, but we're going to, you know, it's going to look like a house, but we're going to have a commercial kitchen. So I would be the on-site caterer if you need it. Um, part of this wedding venue oh, as so well. As we're going to do a food trailer. You know what I mean? So we're going to do the food trailer thing, but that's like kind of our, that's what we're thinking right now. And people are probably like listening to this, like, what the heck? Like, don't you want to do, and yes, I do want to do barbecue full time, but it's, I have to find a way, you know, cause I'm going to get two paychecks. I'm you know, my VA disability. Um, and then obviously my retirement, but I just, I want to have that steady income coming in. I want to make sure that, um, and create know, like a business, things. like a, a full yeah. business, like that's yeah. a rounded business. And that, exactly. and then you could still do the barbecue and still have that. Exactly. And, you know, I have two weddings to pay for. I have two girls, so I have two weddings to pay for. So and college. I, I don't want to think about the weddings, but I, I just it's inevitable, in, inevitable. So, you know, and I have I have college to pay for. But, uh, you know, it's it, it's good. And, you know, I just, um, you know, the barbecue community has saved my life. It really is. Um, you know, I used to drink really heavy when I barbecued and, and you know, especially just you know, doing a whole brisket or something, I'd start off and you'd be like, Oh yeah, like pounded beers and then go to, you know, hard liquor, um, or, you know, to whiskey. But now I'm very focused and like, I, you know, if I'm, if, if we're at a festival, then obviously having fun, but when it's here at the house, you know, cause we do everything 
um, we have a commercial kitchen we prep all of our sides at and then all the meat and then we'll bring it, you know, um, like a, uh, what do you call it? A commissary. Yeah, yeah. But then we'll bring the meat back and then I'll smoke it at the house. And so, um, for, for us, you know, uh, it's, it's game on. It, it's like, this is, this is my life on the line. This is our business is Rosser's blue court barbecue. This is us. We are, we are representing us. So like, you know, that, that meat on that pit, like it's, it's game on, you know, it's like, it's time to, to buckle down. So I'm, you know, I might have a f- few here and there, but like, if I've, I've, I've talked to other burning. people that have said that they used to drink a lot when they cook and yeah. now they don't. So I think that's, you know? it's a similar story. That's something you, you that people, just, you, you can't, you, you know? know, to stay so, focused, to stay uh, properly yeah. focused. Yeah. You really do. And, you know, um, this past weekend and, you know, I kind of jumping around, but everything, but well, not really jumping around, but this past weekend we did a, um, a barbecue competition and, uh, Ryan, um, I don't know, Newman, Newman from, uh, backline fabrication. You know, I don't know if you've seen my smaller pit. Mm-hmm. Well, he took it off the trailer and then put it on a cart, um, and then had, uh, had it powder coated army green. And like the thing oh, is, that's cool. is awesome. That's and great. so we, um, we did all that, but, um, I, we, we comp- competed under his, his name, smoke and rifles barbecue. And I got eighth place chicken, which I was really proud of, well, that's um, cool you know, out of 70, 78 teams or something. And he did the ribs and brisket. So we, we did pretty well, but, uh, just getting that eight place chicken, you know, I've only competed three times. The first time I did the chicken, I got, um, sixth place. Brett had got fifth place. And then the second time Brett wasn't even there. He was at, um, um, the brisket camp. And so we competed under his name and we got first place chicken and I did the chicken. So really, uh, happy about that. And this, this, you know, third time, uh, eighth place chicken. And we were up against some really tough competition. So, um, but working with Ryan and all that is really cool. And, you know, Ryan, Ryan and actually Sonny right now are working on a really cool, um, uh, collaboration, a two fifty that's gonna, that's gonna be blowing some people's minds. So, um, be expecting that next, uh, probably month and a half or so. Cause he's tied up. Ryan's tied up with, um, um, uh, South by Southwest, you know, yeah, that we yeah. have down are down in Austin. But uh, I'm going to tell you, man, like the barbecue community, like I'll never forget going and picking up my uh, going and picking up the grunt, the Moberg. And, you know, Ryan met us at the switch because we all went to the switch and had brunch and he met us up there. And, and it, like seeing him and Sonny talk like that was what was really cool. And I've seen Sonny and the Mill Scale boys like they've talked and and other guys that, that pit build. But it's just really cool how even that like that's their competition, yeah. you know, and, and obviously the barbecue committee, we're all each other's competition. But everybody just comes together and we support each other, you know, stickers going on everything, you know, you see stickers everywhere. That's the best part. And that's what it's it's all about love. It's like, and you want to like lift each other up, but what's the point? You don't want to destroy people. What's the point? Exactly. Exactly. And I I love that about the one thing, Sonny, it always sticks to me is that he's like, I can't build them all, Steven. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, I know that I lose some and, and then I gain some or whatever the case may be. But he's like, I can, in the end, I can't build them all. And it was, you know, man, Kevin, I, I, you know, I can't, you know, number one, my brother's name is Kevin. So it's really cool that, uh, you know, that we, we met like this and yeah. that you reached out to me and, you know, I know we've been going round and round and round and just couldn't make it happen, but here we are. We made thank it you happen. so much. I, I, this was yeah. such a great story and thank you for yeah. sharing all those okay. details. It's, I, oh, yeah. I, it, it, it's, it's rough to talk about, but it's me and it's, it's what, def- it doesn't define me by any means, but it's what motivates me to make this work. And what shaped you, know, you as like, a person, what created you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we, um, you know, last night, um, you know, my, I, I basically, I trimmed the brisket, I seasoned it. And yesterday I left, I had to go back to work and my wife has really, you know, monitored the pit. She's really got that fire management down, which is really awesome. And this brisket turned out amazing. Like these, these briskets we had on there turned out great. Um, but it's like things like that, that, that love and that, like when you open that, that butcher paper, that pack, like, it's like a Christmas, Mm -hmm. Christmas morning. That's the same kind of thing that I want to feel 20, 30 years from now. I want to feel that every time I open it up, it's like, I know they're cooked. I know all that, but it's just unwrapping that. And you might have a customer that's been coming to you, you know, for the last 10 years, you know, five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be. And just seeing that and that, that excitement when they eat that, that bar, you know, eat your barbecue, there's just something about that mm-hmm. because you're like, man, 
that 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 motivates me to get you know to go more and more and more and you know and having these return customers that are now friends of mine so you know great. and and it's just it's just awesome you know it's just just really really awesome so well that's great um, well, just be looking forward to it so. i'm i'm so excited about your future and and about meeting you in person and for hanging sure. out and, and, and yeah. eating your food and yeah. and i'm just i'm i'm just i'm stoked for you this is really cool and thank you so much and and yeah and i i think people will get so much out of this interview so much yeah well, I really appreciate everything, and um, yeah, if you need anything from me, don't hesitate. When you come out to Texas, man, I'll, I'll be mad if you don't hit me up. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be upset too if I don't see you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, have a have a great rest of your week. All right, thanks, All right brother. All right, take All it right. easy. We'll talk to you. Thanks All so right. much. Bye.